We grew up believing we were poor. And for this reason, we did not enjoy our God-given gifts. The sea, we were afraid of it. It didn't have a back door. The sun was too hot, would make us too black, so we hid from it. We did not enjoy our locally grown foods. I know I would hide and eat my bakes. I would take them to school, but I would run to the middle of the pasture, hide and eat those bakes and gulp down the mobby just as fast. Today, myself and my sister Verling will apologize to all those foods we so dislike. Bakes, mobby, fish cakes. We are dedicating this to bakes. My sister, my twin sister Verling, actually no, she's not my twin sister, but everybody thought she was my twin when we were growing up. She was the big specialist when we were growing up. So she is going to do this episode for us. Verling, welcome to Up The Gap. Yes, I just took a stroll up the gap and the woman got me working. <laughs> okay, so we're going to work on some bakes. And these are the things that you need. You need flour, you need sugar, you need salt, nutmeg, you need cooking oil, which we currently don't have here, and also a fried pan. So we are going to show you how we mix the bakes. No measurements today because we are doing things as we used to do them up the gap. Right. Okay, so I'm going to get the flour. Oh, I forgot to mention you need a sip because we usually sip the flour and most of all the bowl <laughs> to mix. So we just want to do a small amount um, to demonstrate. So there's about three scoops right now. And before I do that, I'll just add the nutmeg. I usually add the nutmeg in the sip. And we sift the flour. And what I usually do, I just make a hole in the center. Some people, what they do is they mix the sugar, the salt, and the nutmeg in a cup, and then with the water, and then add it to the base. But I do mine a little bit differently. I just make a hole in the center. I add the sugar. And we go a bit lighter on the sugar now, because you know everything is like diabetes and so we don't use as much sugar as we would have up the gap. Right. And I use my palm to just measure a bit of salt. We add the salt. We go easy on that also. And then we add the water. And sometimes you have to play around with the amount of water that you add to it. You just want to make sure that it has the right consistency or texture for when you're ready to drop the bakes. So right now we just need to add a bit more water to make it a little bit... So you just keep stirring until you get all the flour coming together. Now, right now, if I was making dumplings, this is how the texture would be for dumplings, but we are making bakes. And as you can well imagine, up the gap, you're sitting patiently waiting for these bakes to finish. Sometimes we'd be outside playing bat and ball while Vern is inside making these bakes, or me, I love reading, so I'd be sitting there reading and just waiting for these bakes to be finished. So sometimes you can give your arm a workout by just making sure you keep beating it and mixing it to, so it gets to the right texture. And then what you can do is you drop it and make sure the texture is right for when you're ready to put it in the fry pan. I just use my finger to taste to make sure um, it's well proportioned, the sugar, the flour, and the salt, and nutmeg. So we're ready to start frying the bakes. The oil 
is hot, like you warm the pan before you actually start dropping the bakes. Sometimes the type of spoon that you use determine the shape of the bakes. Okay, so you've got the first batch and you make sure they're nice and golden brown. So uh, wow, what I usually good. yeah, what I usually do is I turn them consistently that way um, they cook on both sides. My spatula here is acting up. But growing up, we just used to use a fork. We weren't this fancy with spatulas. We just used to use a fork to, to turn them. So I just turned the heat, heat up a little bit, the stove up a little bit more. Um, it was a little bit uh, low before. So if you turn the heat up, you have to stay on it consistently because you don't want them to burn. So you'll keep turning until you get a nice golden brown. Um, I find um, at our church get-togethers, especially if we're doing a breakfast, this goes down on the bakes, um, or one of the popular dishes that people tend to gravitate towards. And um, if you want, you can make them healthy. You can add um, round wheat flat flour. seed. Yes. You can use whole wheat flour. It's totally up to you. And some people add a bit of meal to take away from the, what's the word, the harshness of the white flour. Because now, you know, white flour has a bad name. But for us growing up, we just love flour. Whether it was in dumplings, um, bakes. Uh, fish cakes, muffins, you know, they used to say we ate so much flour that if we got wet, we would just dissolve our float. Our float. <laughs> this product for golden bakes, golden brown bakes, and you can have them with an egg for breakfast, or you can have it with some corned beef for lunch, and you can also, if you wanted, add a glass of cold Milo, you can have it with some Mobby. Or you can even use it with some sorrow. And for dinner, if you want, you can just add a steak, a piece of steak fish. First, thank you to my sister Verley for joining me on this episode. Here's a little poem dedicated to Bakes. Say, I do so love Bakes. I will eat them anywhere. I will eat them every day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bakes. I so love Bakes. Bajan I am. Join me next time when I introduce you to the flick can, the centipede, and our speedy grandmothers. See you next time on Up the Gap.